we're gonna tune the bike properly sit on the dyno for a few hours let's get it a cold start here this is the stock i should say the provided map by fuel moto there we go cold start we're gonna get some bagels have breakfast over there and start to tune give you numbers before and after obviously I have numbers uh, from the build even before we put uh, the 3030 the start 3030 cam in it gave us good numbers actually 93 horsepower 114 uh, torque uh, look at the beautiful marks birth marks I had from the birth of the pipe We'll take care of those. I should be getting in the mail very soon. Two uh, heat shields here and here. We'll figure that out. I rigged a little because <laughs> I left the bags at home. So. the police you hear that rumble that's the typical 3030 easiest way to find neutral from second down a half a click or from first half a click up you tell me let's see who wins how many gets the most votes actually I'm gonna put it as a poll <laughs> on the channel and we'll see look only the boys turn around <laughs> it's amazing I hit the gas the boys turn around girls keeps walking hey man how you doing <laughs> That's <laughs> so cool, so sweet. The little boy, oh my god. I waved to me, I waved back, he's like, yes! Okay, kid zone. This is, uh, I'm running right now the Fuel Moto a base map upon which we're, we will be tweaking and doing our custom tune. Because I'd imagine that uh, the tune that comes from, uh, from Fuel Moto, you know, the map, it's pretty close to what it's gonna what it's supposed to be but again everybody tunes and runs the bike uh, differently one searches for max power and runs the bike lean the other would want more reliability run it a little bit richer I know there's a baseline that uh, like the recommended air to fuel ratio the mixture uh, you see a lot of I get a lot of questions about this little bluetooth remote it's a bluetooth remote that i bought on amazon i think it's called uu it's like 18 dollars it it connects to the phone and then also the phone connects to the speakers so that's how it works it's like 18 dollars. i have a link down below by the description area just look under the video itself there's a a, a place where it says description and then uh, it's that has like less than one paragraph written and then there's more you click that more it opens up a menu or under the video or on the right side and that's where you can find links and uh descriptions of what's going on in the video links to different items on the video and stuff like that there you go lesson to life come on this is why i installed the love jugs for this kind of traffic and for days are a little bit hotter, warmer. Mike, what exactly are we doing? So right now we're taking out your stock oxygen sensors. And you the sensors over here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's one here and there's one in the front. Right. And we're going to install the wideband oxygen sensors, which allows us 
to... What is a wideband? What is that? So the wideband oxygen sensors are going to gather data uh, for AFRs between 10 and 19. Sorry, what is AFRs? So it's your air fuel ratio. Oh, right. Okay, right. So they're going to gather between 10 yeah. and 19. Gotcha. Okay, we know that 13.5 is your optimal tune. You know, okay. Not too rich, not too lean. The stock Harley sensors right. only register and only can receive data between 14 and 16. So they can't even get down to that 13. .5. Why would we care to go so low or so high? Well, 13.5 is optimal. No, I mean, why do we need better sensors? Like, what's the big deal? Well, we want the bike to run there. If we put those two sensors in and tune it at 14, we're already in that lean area. Got you. So you want a bit a bigger span it's a of variety. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and these wide bands will uh, run through the power vision oh. and through our dyno and give us accurate readings Got on you. our screen. Okay. Here you have Harley narrow band sensors. Which is on the bike itself, right? Right. And these are the wide band sensors oh. that we're gonna install. Got you. So what are you doing on the left side, Mike? What's on that all about? On the left about? side we are getting our tack signal off of the ignition coil for RPMs. Oh, I got you. So it reads the, the pulses, the pulses that go into the wire. Right, right. So we have a uh, probe here. We're going to clamp off to the, on, on the newer bikes. It's the green wire. So we're going to clamp this off to the green wire. Okay. I got you. That'll give us our correct pulse. You do have the love jugs installed, which has given us a little bit of... Or hard, harder reach. Harder reach. We're going to do a base pull just to see what the fuel moto base map is giving us. And from there, uh, every, uh, every graph we're going to record, save, and... tune session for okay. your bike yep i have specific uh just like other tuners i have my own specific target table right there that i'm not the going to show that i like to use the auto tune as we run through each throttle position and rpm it is going to either add or remove fuel and get it to my target table and we're going to run through that session over and over again now once we go through it and we'll show you as we're doing it we're going to show you that there's pluses and minuses um, where it's either adding or removing fuel. When we do a session and see zeros, ones, and possibly some twos, then we know we're done at that point. We're not making any changes anymore. When you say zeros, ones, and twos, what is so that? So a zero means I ran through the box and the uh, auto tune session did not change my air fuel. Oh, okay. It likes okay. where it is. Okay, so if it's a one, it's very minimal. And you. if it's a two, it's very minimal. Got you. I want to make sure that all these sixes, eights, and tens. That's are how far away you are from the target. From my target AFR. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. So right now, I'm just going to enable the auto tune on here. What it does is we, we're going to pick the tune that we want to auto tune. That's the base I created. And we're going to tell the system that we're using the wideband uh, uh, O2 sensors. sensors. So now it's going to turn on that and we're going to start running. Okay. We're at 156, 158, so we got to wait until 167, idling. 
some nights too. Yeah. It's already different than yesterday. Yeah. Almost there. Where's the temperature? 163 at the top there. We gotta get to 160. Oh, I see. You can see it up there? Yeah. And I only tune between 200 and 280. If I get to 280, it shuts down and I wait. See how it's recording now? See how it's recording? Yeah. Change it to orange. So now, what we can see, if I go to the correction screen, One pull, a first pull after our first session. After our first dyno tune session, yeah, auto tune session, sorry. Yeah. We're gonna do a pull now, and we're gonna compare it to the last pull. Okay, good. We're a lot closer, we're not there yet. We're closer on the so blue was your can tune. Right. Look how much horsepower and torque we picked up. 113 now. And 129. 129. Oh, nice. And we're still... I've got a little way to go. Right. I see the so air fuel the, mixture still... I still have a little dip in the front cylinder. Right. These could be corrected, though, outside of auto tune. I can manually correct them. Right. There's your lot straighter than it was, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we still have a little work, a little work to do. Still have a little work to do. Yep. And uh, we'll let the bike cool a little bit. We're going to get some more fuel. And uh, we'll uh, start another session. Yep. So this is Mike. He was helping up over here with the, with the tuning. You, you guys are talking about uh, detonation. And what is that all about? Yeah, so detonation can happen in a handful of different ways. Uh, one of which that we're looking for in the dyno is is our target table, so our 13.5 that we're trying to be able to nail uh, when we're changing out everything, and you know the, the, those two bottom charts. Yeah. Uh, so a detonation can happen with the with it being too lean. So if you're sitting really high above that 13 number there, yeah. Uh, if you start getting into you know 14s and and higher than that, it's it's called what's running too lean. I mean, like it's too hot and stuff. It's too much air. Yeah. to the mixture of fuel that's now flowing into the uh, into the combustion chamber. Right. So if you don't have enough gasoline in there and you have too much air, you're going to be running that engine extremely hot. So who Where, cares? So it's hot. So what? Well, because what happens is that the gasoline starts to ignite before it actually makes its way through the ignition. Oh, so event. the timing is kind of off because of the whole thing. You can look at it that way. It's okay. just it's a lack of fuel, which increases the amount of uh, oxygen that's in there and, and, and temperature. And that kind of acts like a diesel to where it pre-ignites that way. I got you. You can also have it through a handful of other ways that are mechanical. Right. You can have too much oil buildup or carbon buildup on top of your pistons from 
a plethora of different reasons that'll allow pre-ignition or detonation to happen. Oh, okay, cool, thanks. Oh, if you don't know, this is Mike. Mike, uh, you still, where you were at the... Uh... I was at Paul Junior Designs for five years. We did two seasons uh, of American Chopper, 11 and 12. Cool. Yeah. Harley, uh, Harley certified, right? Harley, big dog, and Indian certified. There yes. you go. Thank you, man. No problem. Go for a second session. Try to improve the graph. Second, uh, yeah, second auto tune session. We loaded the corrections. And now we're gonna, gonna do, another, do a run. We're gonna do another run and see how we're, we're oh, working. Oh, cool. Like. Okay. Yep. Now we're gonna go. We we got this. Uh, not much changes, but we need to go in manually. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is, I, um, a dip is normal, but it's taking a long time to recover from that rich condition. So I'm gonna go in and manually remove some fuel from that section, and I'm gonna manually remove some fuel for here, from here. Only the front cylinder. Rear cylinder looks pretty good. It you know? does, yeah. This, I might I might make a small change here, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll see what it looks like when Got I get you. in there. After the manual change, yeah, and we'll see if we uh, have straightened out that line any any, any bit. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> That's my raw number. So these are your raw uncorrected horsepower and torque numbers. So what that means is uh, this is what the bike is actually putting out at this point in time. Oh, when we go into corrected, that takes the atmosphere, it takes the humidity and temperature in this building into effect. I got you. So you I'll know, take, it's, I'll it's take a this. formula. Those I'll, are, I'll take this. Those are your real raw numbers. <laughs> though. They are. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So. One set, 118, 134 and a half. Yeah. So uh, after the ma manual tweakings, we came in very, uh, very close to what we had before, but we're want to tweak a little bit manually, add a little bit more fuel because it's running a little bit lean between uh, three and four. That's bullshit. That's why I thought. So we're doing that again and sending the new tweaks to the EC. More tweaks and another run. <laughs> Exhaust is getting browner and browner by the moment. Yeah. Closer to the bronze. You don't, you don't need that brand. No. No. I'm happy with the line right now, so we're going to do one more auto tune session. See if the if, see if the auto tuner wants to make any changes. Okay. And then uh, then we'll do the final. We'll do runs. some final runs. Diagnostic. Yep. As I can tell already, the, the low end has picked up a lot. From I was actually looking how you were aiming for the throttle position. You were missing that 90 90 percent yeah. throttle position. It's very hard. <laughs> it's hard to get it in there. Yeah, and run the line to, yeah. it, to hold yeah. it there. And you got to hold it in position, and sometimes if you're on the cusp. It'll bounce back. <laughs> so I'm going to push that auto tune session to the bike. We're going to let it cool down, right. have some lunch, and then we're going to do some pulls. Okay, right. cool. We're going to 
do three pulls after we completed all of our Three poles, they almost lay right on top of each other. Okay. So we sacrificed uh, maybe like a point and two points there, but that's not a notice. That's not going to be noticeable. Okay. So if you look at the last three runs, look at your, your line. Very nice. Lay the second run on top. third one they're all very consistent yeah your lines are consistent your numbers are consistent that's reliability good okay all right we're gonna i'm gonna take it out on the road now and see what it feels like on the road okay so i wrote it on saturday i know what it felt like then okay perfect okay okay that's you that's that's ours the final this is the same setup as yours yeah the Thundermax. So you got three more horsepower and a little more torque on okay. the Thundermax. He had two into two exhaust. And then here's one very similar to yours. This is a long uh, Thunder header. So he, same torque, a couple more horsepower points out of the Thunder header. Because that's a high two into one that is way longer than yours. A little longer than yours. Thunder header, yeah. yeah. So we're at the numbers where we said we want to be in terms of reliability, yep. not run, not not letting it run uh, lean, and uh, sacrificing a few points for uh, reliability. Points you will not, you'll, not feel. You're yeah. not going to feel two, three points. Right. Okay. I'm happy with that. It's the next day. Yesterday I went riding right after I took the the bike from being tuned, and the footage was disastrous. My camera didn't record, so the, today is the next day. Taking it out for a ride so you can hear it. Really, really greatly improved. Let's start with the cold start. Listen to that. Listen to that. So yesterday when I came back from uh, the tuning, rode uh, from uh, Tour Custom Cycles back home and I was expressing what I felt, uh, pretty much gonna be repeating myself because I got the, I think the camera was uh, rolling but for some reason the microphone was not connected. So I was pretty much talking to myself. First of all, the power is uh, unbelievable. I definitely feel an improvement, uh, improvement from the time before we went into the dyno tune, before we tuned the bike, when we just got out of uh, the basic, the basic uh, uh, tune that we got from uh, Fuel Moto. We picked up a lot of power on the lower end. I can literally feel it from two to three. Bike gives a really kick 
kick in the back. I added the backrest because uh, it literally was was pulling me, was pushing me back. And the power. <laughs> First of all, the sound is uh, is like so inspiring, so exciting. That's the word. It's exciting. It's like. bike is awake it's alive I changed I mean we changed uh, the the throttle response to 100% on the tuner that means it's pretty much as if there's it's connected it's like a cable the cable throttle connected directly to the carburetor so there's zero lag between my throttle and the response go see Mad Max <laughs> actually after this I'm taking a I'm heading over to John's we're gonna ride together so that's gonna be in the next video bike is really responsive Woo! bike feels great it's a bit chilly today and no these gloves are not construction gloves they're goat skin see it's even got the squeegee for the helmet to wipe the, the water off your helmet oops good thing I uh, <laughs> slow down <laughs> slow down <laughs> bike feels really really good I'm extremely happy extremely happy with the build with the tune it's got a nice deep deep rumble to it As you've seen, we've I've taken you through the journey of uh, what a tuner goes through. I don't know if uh, there's ever people that do tuning like to keep their professional secrets and not uh, show you what they're doing. Mike uh, from Torque Custom Cycles, you know, just showed me everything except for his target map, which that's like the secret ingredient that every every uh tuner likes to you know keep to, to himself that's secret of the trade as you've seen we've uh and i've showed you through the graphs we went through we touched through all of our runs we touched all different parameters we got all the way up to i think it was 116 and 130 almost and uh we took a conscious decision actually to drop the numbers to drop the numbers just so we can achieve a more reliable you know long-term uh map where we actually not me it's like uh the tuner mike decided uh and that's his philosophy in tuning everybody's got his own you know his own philosophy his philosophy is to go for long-term reliability and keep the air to fuel ratio at 13.5 uh and that even if it you know it drops the numbers a little bit and that's uh literally uh like you've seen we went we were up at the 130 uh 116 130 torque and consciously we decided he decided to drop the numbers so we get a better fuel uh, air to fuel ratio at the higher rpms at the higher numbers we were at running lean and that runs the engine you know uh hotter and long term uh, not as reliable if you drop uh, a little bit uh, the parameters and go a little bit uh more towards not say rich but uh 13.5 on average and on all the spectrum and that's his decision and i'm 
I'm, I'm totally fine with it because to me, you know, long-term reliability of the engine is, uh, I don't, you can't really feel one or two or three units of, uh, you know, dropping the uh, horsepower or the, uh, the torque. So took you through the process that I went through today. I learned a lot. Hope you did as well. Stay tuned for more of the rides. We're going to be riding alongside a uh, Mad Max cycle fanatics have now that the pipe sounds like amazing. It should be really, really fun. That's it. I'm Sandy. You're watching uh, Holy Shift. Till the next video, guys. Peace out.